So with six months under my belt, 40,000 miles on the truck, 190 tanks fulls of gas, I found my way from the rivers of Maine down to the Everglades, out to California, and then back down to Texas for a month, where I went to the Mexican border and checked out the comings and goings for a while. But at this point in the game, I didn't really have any direction. I didn't know which way I was going to head. So I found my way towards the Arizona and Nevada area. I was trying to duck the cold of the winter, and I didn't want to put on socks. So to Arizona and Nevada I went. The first place I stopped was Lake Mead. And something about Lake Mead I had no idea about was there's a lot of bighorn sheep there. And I love bighorn sheep. I hadn't seen them since Wyoming or Colorado. But the only way I could get any footage of a bighorn was with an incredibly long telescopic lens. And it was a fleeting view. But we're going to put a pin in that because we'll come back to them later. So one morning I wake up in Area 51 and I get a text from my father. That's me passing my father a barbell right there. And the text said, hey, why don't you go check out Lovelock Cave in Nevada? And I thought to myself, well, that's a great idea. I had already done a video recently on giants in America and around the world and Lovelock Cave was in there, but I had never actually been to Lovelock Cave. So quickly, I turned the wheels, hit the gas, and headed to Lovelock. So while I was heading towards the Lovelock Cave, Nevada area, I came across this beautiful lake near a military base. The name escapes me right now. But I was taking pictures, getting footage, etc. And I started poking around, as I'm known to do. And I came across what appeared to be bighorn scat. Or at least that's what I thought it was. So I started investigating and I started climbing upwards and upwards and upwards. And I had a camera with a long lens on it, so I started looking around. Ooh, these scrambles are no joke. And after climbing up quite a distance, I realized there was a whole herd of bighorns looking straight down at me. So what do I do? I head straight up there, or I try to at least. So while spending hours upon hours at Lake Mead, simply trying to get a really grainy telescopic video or picture of a bighorn at Lake Mead, I had these guys running right by me. I mean, there was an amazing amount of them. I, there must have been 40 of them. And I climbed my way right into the middle of their pathway. And fortunately, they don't attack, which was awesome because that would have sucked. I thought of that when it was a little bit too late. But for those that love things like this, I'm going to give you a good three minutes of nothing but big horns. And you can skip it if you want to, but we'll get to Lovelock Lake right after, I promise.
So that was totally unexpected, but it was phenomenal for me because I was literally looking for big horns and had no clue you could even find them in such abundance in Nevada. It took me, I mean, I was standing on the top of rocks where I should not have been whatsoever at all. I mean, I'm in bighorn country, but it all worked out well, and I made my way to Lovelock Cave, and it was a long, long ride. So after driving through the desert, making my way to the town of Lovelock, Nevada, the weather was terrible. It was raining, snowing, and unseasonably cold for being in Nevada, but it is what it is. I finally made my way to the town of Lovelock, and when you drive off the interstate, you simply take a left, and there's a McDonald's right there, and that will bring you to the back road, which takes you out onto a dirt road of about 12 miles. So you just head out into the desert for about 12 miles and then you eventually find your way to the cave. Now the cave has collapsed or been imploded. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell what story is true. But the cave is still there, but nothing like it used to be. But it was amazing to me to see this. In 1929, UC Berkey did a archaeological dig on this exact site, and then sometime after that, the cave allegedly caved in. But the cave is still there, but just not, nothing like it used to be. When you, when you go to this area, this is what you're looking at. For miles and miles and miles, you're looking at mountain ranges surrounded by wide open desert in every direction. So for them to have for them to have this cave as their place to ward off enemies, bring captured Indians, cannibalize them, etc. Militarily speaking, it was a good spot. I'm standing right under the entrance of the cave, and this is what you can see in all directions. So nobody was sneaking up on these guys, and the, and the fact that the Indians actually got the drop on them says a lot, in my opinion. So before I give you the history on the cave, I'm gonna show you the cave itself. This is the entrance right there where the little red arrow just pointed to. And then I'm gonna show you the, the view as if you were standing inside the cave and looking out. You can see my truck down on the bottom right side and then the rock outline for where the mountain used to be until it caved in or collapsed or whatever actually happened to it. But it's a large area, and it's, it's, like a, it's like a natural fortress in the middle of the desert, which is very smart on behalf of the man-eating, cannibal, red-haired giants that live there. That's the cave itself, the mountain the cave was in, and apparently the front side was either collapsed or collapsed on its own. Sounds kind of shady to me, but, you know, is what it is. This entire thing ruins the theory of evolution but what are you gonna do? But that's it right there. That big broken mountain was the cave. You can still go inside the cave, don't get me wrong. Actually, let's do that. I'm gonna bring you, you gotta hike up the front of this mountain to get to the entrance of the cave, and I'm gonna bring you right inside the cave and show it to you from many angles, how's that? And then after the fact, I'll tell you the history, and then show you the actual proof that UC Berkey actually called these things giants as well. So it isn't just some myth, these were giants. 
just like the Paiute said they were. So like I said, to get up there, you got to walk up a path to get into the entrance, which I put a red circle around. And there's a pathway that goes from left to right. From the entrance all the way down to the side. And there's a very thin goat path, basically, or a bighorn sheep path that you need to climb up in order to get there. So that's what I did. I got to the cave late in the day, so I did an initial walkthrough with a Canon EOS R5 with a 15 to 35 millimeter lens on it. And then I returned the following morning and did it again with a GoPro. So you're gonna be able to see both vantage points because I covered this mountain pretty much like no one else that I know of. Because I've never seen footage like this, so you're probably going to enjoy it. But this entire mountain, this entire discovery is kind of batshit. And I say that because bat guano was an improbable boom commodity around the turn of the last century. They used bat guano for fuel, like we use propane now. You know what I'm saying? It was an important ingredient in fertilizer before artificial nitrogen fixation had been invented. And every bat came became the center of a burst of mining activity, and Nevada's Lovelock Cave was no exception. In their excavations, the miners encountered Native, Af Native American artifacts, which they largely, largely discarded in a heap outside the cave. Only when the artifacts started to hinder the operation did professional archaeologists come involved in excavating the cave properly. Unsurprisingly, the mining had seriously damaged the arche archaeological record of this site, and as word got out that artifacts had been found, looters added to the destruction. Later, archaeologists even referred to their work as a salvage operation, which is sad. Still, much information was recovered, and the Lovelock Cave remains one of the best documented archaeological sites in the Great Basin in Nevada to this day. Now, I glean this information from Atlas Obscura, Obscura. I don't go to Wikipedia because Wikipedia pushes all the <sighs> Rockefellers, Rothschilds, etc., etc., their beliefs. They want you to believe in evolution, and yet there's literally proof positive of giants all over the United States, all over the world. And in this video right here, not only do I cover it, but I give you the link so you can check it yourself. Things like this. I've saved and linked the UC, the University of California, Berkeley's digital collections, and they have a long, long, long detailed write-up on Lovelock Cave from 1929. Subject, Paiute Indians antiquities. The only problem is the Paiute said that these people had nothing in the world to do with them, and the fact that many of them were found with double rows of teeth, meaning they had two rows of teeth and six fingers and six toes on every hand. Okay? These guys documented that right here. And it's still here to this day. As well as Abraham Lincoln. Fragments of notes regarding Niagara Falls where he speaks about giants in pretty good detail. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't a secret. It only became a secret because giants ended up in the news constantly when people were out plowing their fields and discovering that they had eight, nine, and ten foot tall skeletons in their fields buried inside large mounds. Well, that all changed in like 1947. You never saw another write-up. But like I said, in this video right here, I documented all of this. And I'm saying all of it. Everything is right here. All the information, all the proof you could possibly need. But this proof goes against evolution. Because if evolution were real, which is still only a theory, but people think it's completely real, we wouldn't be getting larger. You know what I mean? If we were evolving, we weren't giants and then got smaller. So it is what it is. At any rate, back to the video. Okay, so Lovelock Cave overlooks the Humboldt Sink where the landlocked Humboldt River ends. It is still a wetland. Even now, it will form Humboldt Lake in wet years, and the area would have provided abundant resources for early indigenous people. 
The Paiutes, a Native American tribe in Nevada, passed down a story orally of a race of giant red-haired quote-unquote barbarians called the Sitika. Sitika. The story goes the giant race were defeated at Lovelock Cave and that perhaps some of the artifacts uncovered there were connected to the ancient people. What they meant was the people that were farming the bat guano literally found the bones, found the skulls, etc., and so didn't the guys from UC Berkey, and they called them giants because they were giants, and they had six fingers and six toes. Now, I've run, out to, I've run into that in petroglyphs all over the deserts of Moab, all in the surrounding areas, and I'll tell you something. If somebody went through the trouble of carving this, I'm on a mountainside, and it just started hailing like you read about. This is not the place to be currently. But when you're searching for petroglyphs or evidence of fallen angels carved in stone, this is the place to be. Oh my. There are actual pictographs that I'm standing in front of petroglyphs that are located in the deserts of Arizona and Moab. And I can't help but notice that even back in these times, these people went through all the trouble of drawing these things while they were trying to feed themselves, clothe themselves, protect themselves from other tribes, so forth and so on. But if you notice in this video, one, two, three, four, five, and then right next to it is a larger foot with one, two, three, four, five, six toes. Now I go on to tell you in this video that it isn't just one time. It's three separate times on this, this pictograph, a petroglyph, whatever you'd like to call it. But these things are scattered all over the country. This is one that I found in the middle of the desert. It shows a woman giving birth, apparently, next to what appears to be a giant. Do you see what I'm saying? And I think they went through all the trouble to make two separate feet. One's drastically larger and different. One's got five. The other's got six. These people were trying to warn us. That's why you carve things in stone. I'm sure they were all well aware of the great flood that came and washed everything away. Well, you can't really wash rocks away. No, you can't. But what you can do is change history and rewrite history, and that's exactly what they've done. Because in our lifetime alone, black holes went from being something theoretical to being completely proven. Evolution went from a theory to being completely proven. The Big Bang went from a theory to being completely proven, even though none of, they were, not, none of them were proven. They simply rewrote it, which is what they're doing. And now with the advent of computers, tablets, cell phones, texting, etc., it's even easier now because they can change any answer to match any answer that they happen to need at the time. I myself have spent the last 11 years going out and trying to find these things out for myself. I've found numerous petroglyphs Unfortunately, that computer with all my really good footage on it got stolen, which is why I had to download from an older video I did years back. But I've gone out into the deserts, I've talked to the Native Americans, I've listened to their stories, and I've looked at their carvings. Why in the world would you spend all the time, energy, and effort to sit down and carve two feet in stone, one small, one large, one with five toes, and one with six, if none of this were true in any way whatsoever at all? The burial mounds for Native Americans are all over the United States of America. And when they were uncovered, they discovered that there were things like four foot tall battle axes made out of the most high quality copper and bronze of the time. We're talking 99.1% pure copper, stuff that we can't find to this day. And yet these guys found it no problem whatsoever at all. So believe what you want. I mean, we live in a world where the, our officials completely and totally lie to us for their gain at all times. People vote for politicians knowing for a fact that they are lying to them, but they've only got one or two guys to choose from. So what are you going to do? The lesser of two evils. Well, how's that working out for us right now? We're literally watching our country crumble around us as everyone just keeps going on, playing video games, worrying about sporting events and complaining about prices rising 
while they continue to print more dollar bills that are based on absolutely nothing and our country is being invaded by illegals. But on that, I will, at this time, digress. I'll leave the rest of this footage. You can watch it yourself. There'll be links to the video I talked about that literally shows all the proof that you need that there were giants in these days. Proof from an ex-president, proof from a college, proof from the people that actually lived through it. Or you can listen to what experts say these days, people that have never actually set foot in these places. At any rate, here we go. Enjoy. Thank you. 
Thank you.